Fox News Alert now. Let's watch this together. The U.S. military has just released brand new video of the exact moment a Russian fighter jet collides with a U.S. drone. This is the second jet. The first one had over and out and around. It would knock that drone into the Black Sea. They say 5,000 feet below the surface. The Russians are trying to get that drone. We are not. Former U.S. Air Force fighter pilot, GOP Congressman August Fluger joins us now. He sits on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, too. Congressman, we have a lot to discuss. First, your reaction with your experience from the video that we just got 20 minutes ago. Well, Brian, good morning. And I'm just seeing the footage now for the very first time. And like we can so keep many playing it if you others. want. And you could just tell it's, us what you see. You know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that it's an aggressive and brazen act uh, for the Russians to come out and say, uh, that it was the MQ-9 Reaper's fault. I mean, th these these drones only maneuver at 30 to 40 degrees. It's obvious that this was on purpose. It appears that there's fuel coming out. Uh, and, and really, the fact that the, the Russian jet survived it um, is, is kind of incredible as well. I was very disappointed to hear that uh, our Secretary of Defense would not comment more on his conversation. It's clear that this was a, a very provocative action um, and, and completely unnecessary. Congressman, three U.S. officials familiar with the intelligence said the highest levels say the, the, said that the highest levels of the Kremlin approved the aggressive actions on the military fighter jet. So even though we were in international skies over international waters, they approved of this knowing that this could be the result. Now, you just said something interesting. You said that for the fighter jet to do that, they were risking their own safety. So that would make one to conclude that they didn't do this on purpose, clipping the drone, you think? Well, certainly, if, if the fighter pilot in that jet attempted to run into another aircraft, I mean, they would be putting their own life at sa in risk. You know, when I was deployed in the Middle East, we unfortunately saw this kind of a cavalier and cowboy approach from Russian fighter pilots. In fact, in 2017 over Syria, there was a near midair where a Russian jet, very similar to this flanker that you saw, uh, almost had a midair with the U.S. Air Force jet that would have killed dozens of people. So this isn't the first time. Uh, it's completely incredible that they would do this. Um, and really, we need an apology from the Russian um, government. Do you think we're going to get it? No. Do you think we're going to get our $30 no. million dollars back? No. But you know what they could get? What the Iranians got? Our drone. And they were able to reverse engineer it. And now they have a fleet of drones. Not saying they wouldn't have got one without it, but we just expedited uh, their intelligence. So we are not trying to get it. We have no presence there. But a couple of things to keep in mind. People say, well, we don't want World War III. Who does? But with the Russians, weakness gets you there quicker. They cannot afford to confront us. They cannot handle the Ukrainian army. Do you think they can handle NATO? Why don't we think boldly and strongly? You're exactly right. The only thing that Russians respect is strength. And this is the thing that our foreign policy, it starts at the top. Uh, you know, we should have a, a strong approach in, in every aspect of foreign policy. Um, and, and now you see the weakness that's coming out of the, the response here. Uh, we, we should obviously demand multiple things uh, as a result of this. Um, but, you know, you, they've got this war going on in Ukraine and, and they're out playing around uh, and, and getting incredibly close with aggressive maneuvers uh, to an in international sky to, to our aircraft. Unacceptable. We've got to be strong and, and lay the law down. And that hasn't happened. Gotcha. And I'm to my last point on this. Turkey shot down a Russian fighter jet in 2015. What happened? Nothing. Because Turkey felt as though it was their skies. Russia thought it was their skies. Nothing. In fact, they are tighter now than they were prior. So you can shoot down a Russian jet who gets in your way and you stare them down. That's the only way to get results if past his prologue. Yesterday, you did something very significant. You and the Republicans, sadly, Democrats chose not to go, went down to the border to find out for yourself how bad it is for the people that are on there on a daily basis. Here's a little of the, here's a here's a, some highlights from the hearings. Does, does DHS have operational control of our entire border? No, sir. How many uh, people do you represent in the National Border Patrol Council? Uh, 16,500. Do they believe that we have operational control of our southern border, that it is secure? Absolutely not. Or do they feel supported by the Commander-in-Chief, by Secretary Mayorkas? Do they feel like they have the resources they need to do their job? Absolutely not. Pretty sensational, pretty direct answers. 
What did you glean from this? Well, it was groundbreaking. For the first time in two years, we had an administration official admit to Congress that what we all know, that the border is not secure, that we don't have uh, operational control. Um, you know, first and foremost, thank you to Chief Ortiz for having the courage yep. to walk that line and to lead uh, almost 20,000 Border Patrol agents. But for him to come out and say we don't have operational control, over 60 percent of our southern border is not secure, and I think also very groundbreaking to say that we have a policy crisis is exactly right. This is our promise to America. We said we're going to have a secure country. We said we're going to have a government that's accountable. That's exactly what we're starting to do. And I can't wait to have Secretary Mayorkas testify in front of Congress and see whether or not he agrees for the very first time that we don't have operational control of the border. Yeah, and real quick, do you think that's why Democrats didn't show up? Because they're going to sit there and watch that official say exactly what we all know, that the, that the border is not secure, and Mayorkas was flat out lying? Is that why the Democrats didn't want to be accountable? Well, it's likely that that is exactly right. It's so disappointing. It's disrespectful to the almost 20,000 Border Patrol agents. This should not be a partisan right. uh, fight. We should all want our country to be secure. And unfortunately, they did not show up. They did not take advantage of this opportunity. The former chairman had zero hearings on border security. And now here was our chance. Very disappointed. And uh, it, it's not surprising that they wouldn't take part in a hearing where we're actually exposing the truth about the Biden administration failures. Yeah. And, and you're showing a bunch of people in the middle of nowhere who move their families in the middle of nowhere that you care uh, and that you know what they're up against. Well, Congressman, thanks so much. Appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.